Hello guys again, um, give you guys another update again about our progress on the Optic tool. This month the changes are more about just user flow and a few basic features that were still missing from the UI, we added those. In the background we are also working on the changes for the model, um, I think that will be a big upgrade but for, for this update it's more about the features that really are helpful for generating. Before we go to the updates I'll just show you we have a new landing page for Optic. So before you basically just had the link to get in but there was no in introduction, there was nothing. So now if you go to the website and rather than opening app you press learn more. We have some yeah information about the tool, uh, basically a little introduction into what, what the tool can do. Obviously, if you guys want to ask more about the tool and so on, you can just reach out to us on Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever, and we can we can talk about that. But yeah, that's the landing page. First. The change you really can't see is uh, we changed how we manage the resolution when you generate. Um, so now it should be more consistent and there shouldn't be really any speed difference between a square image or a very wide aspect ratio image because we now managed them both similarly where before you might have a speed difference between different aspect ratios, which is kind of unnecessary. Um, so now it should be consistent uh, and the speed should be always the same. Um, also with the model change that will come later on, I think that will be a big upgrade also with speed. Now if we go to the actual uh, visible changes, let me pull up an image here. Let's say I have this just random watch um, image. Now we have history. Well, we already had a Ctrl Z before, but now we have this history tab on the bottom left. So if you click on that, you can see it will show up all the generations you've done so far. And so now you, you can actually, when you're generating, you can go um, backwards to generation you liked, or then you can go back forward. Before you could only call Ctrl Z and that's it, and you, you couldn't even see the changes. Let's uh, generate a few more here. So now you can see all the four different generations we had. Now again, if you go to like, Let's say we even go to the first one and now we generate. The new generation will be added to to the history. Uh, but if you still control Z, you can go through them in order. Like we, we will have the original image as the last step. Um, so now if I control Z, you can see that's the previous generation. And then you can go back and go, go back. You can also go forward if you do control Y. Now you have, with the history management, you can have a much better uh, user flow with the previous generations that was lacking in the previous uh, update. Obviously, this also works with the generative brush uh, strokes. They don't obviously show up in the generation history, but they're still part of history, so you can still control Z those as well. Yeah, that's that's the history bar. You can also just hide it uh, by making it small. One thing we added is the presets. So on the left, you have this new tab called presets. Um, and now you can pretty much create new presets based on maybe you find settings that you want to save and you want to come again to use them. Uh, let's say the changes that I did here are super good for the generation. Maybe I even want an inspiration image for the preset. So let me just find a, a good one. I, I had like, this stone, stone image as inspiration image. Now, um, <clears throat> if you open the preset menu, you have the plus button here and if I press plus now you have preset one and these settings are now saved as preset one um, if you want to do changes to them let's say I go there and inspiration image is too strong let's say five five now there's the save button uh, if you want to commit to the changes that you did you just press save and it will save you can also like uh, let's say you can create preset two, you can delete them. Right now the maximum is five presets. Uh, I think later on we can scale them up to more and more, but just at the beginning we want to test that there's nothing wrong and so on. So uh, the limit is five. You can also name the presets. So if you just double click and you go um, stone 
style or something like this, uh, and then press save so you can read touch through this. Um, then you can just yeah organize your presets as you want. So now if I refresh this page, um, now the preset should still be there and named correctly, obviously. And now if I, for example, have a different image, now I can use those old presets to generate something new. Um, actually, let's just give it a go just for fun, what this would look like. Very stony. Um, but yeah, that's the presets. Also, again, history if you want to go back and forth. Those are the two main features for this update. And on the next one, you'll probably see a lot of changes to the model underneath, hopefully for, for, for it to be faster and better quality. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about the updates or if you find bugs and stuff, we'd be more than happy if you can send us a message to tell what those are so we can fix them as soon as they're found. Um, especially with the new features, uh, we want to make sure that there's nothing that we skipped in the actual implementation. So hope you guys like the update and I'll, I'll catch you on the next one.